Hello everyone, I am Samar Singla and I run a company called Jugnu in India. And I am here to talk about the Indian Tesla to you. But I have a disclaimer, this is not going to look like the American Tesla. It uh, might be a bit disappointing. So uh, I'll start with a story on how we, we went on this path. I was talking to somebody very senior in a car manufacturing company in India, and I was asking them, you know, what are you going to do for electric vehicles in India? India is obviously a huge market, and uh, why is nobody, any, uh, nobody doing anything for electric? And he said that India is a very rewarding market, but it's a very unforgiving market also. You make a mistake, and there is no going back. You know, and so many big companies have gone into India and, uh, and failed. So that got us thinking that what we need to do is we need to find a very Indian solution to this problem of moving India to electric vehicles. And technology might not be the most important factor there. You know, the whole economics might be the most important factor in this. And that is what, you know, I'm going to talk about. And a little bit about our company, what we do. So Jugnu is an on-demand transportation app like Uber in India. So we do about uh, 40,000 transactions every day. These are predominantly powered by gas vehicles right now. So about uh, 25,000 daily passenger rides and 15,000 deliveries. So, so we, are about, we are present in about 30 cities in India. So it's a, it's a large footprint, but we focus on tier two and tier three markets, right? And uh, now the main reason why we want to move to electric, right? Of course, you know, the obvious reason is that pollution is increasing, but that's not really the biggest reason why India today needs to move to electric, you know, because people talk a lot about pollution, but at the end of the day, it's economy that, you know, drives the decisions. So right now, India is the largest importer of oil in the world. And not just that, India also, the, the largest uh, reason of India's GDP deficit is also oil. And very recently, with, uh, another thing happened is that India became power surplus. For the first time in history, India now has more power than, than it needs. So essentially, you know, in, uh, no oil in India, a lot of uh, oil scarcity, and you put power sur surplus uh, status into that, it makes sense that India focuses on electric vehicles. And of course, the second reason, which is a big reason, but uh, not the primary driving factor, is the rising vehicular pollution. So just the auto rickshaws in India produce about 15 million kilograms of carbon dioxide every day. 15 milli milli uh, million kilograms every day. That's a massive, massive number. And that's what we want to change. So now, what is the big opportunity in India? Why is India primed for electric vehicles? The simple factors are, you know, it is the largest urbanizing economy right now in the world. Only about 30% of the population in India lives in, in uh, urban cities compared to 80% in US. And uh, we feel that in the next 10 years, about 60% of India's population will be living in cities. These will be tier one, tier two, and tier three cities. And all these people will be needing transportation. Most of the tier two and tier three cities do not have a public uh, metro or a bus system in India, which is very surprising, but that's true. And second factor, only 2% of Indian population owns a car and uh, compared to 80% in US and about 15% in China. So that is a, another massive reason why a lot more people will need transportation as a service rather than owning their own vehicles. And finally, you know, the, the demography that we're targeting is the people who ride rickshaws. So at present, every day, there are 30 million rides happening on rickshaws, about 50, uh, five kilometers every ride. That is 150 million kilometers being driven on gas-powered auto rickshaws right now every single day. That is the market we are trying to capture. And this, by the way, means uh, 
15 million kilogram of uh, carbon dioxide every day. So, so this is our solution. It's called OCO2. And OCO2 is the name that we have come up with it. So zero CO2. Um, so it's a very, very simple product. It might even be, you know, it might even look unsafe to a lot of people. Because a lot of people ask me that, you know, where are the seat belts? And I say, guys, if there's an accident, like, God saves you. There's nothing else. And uh, it already runs in India. It's very popular. And there's an interesting reason why it actually is popular in India. So the price point is about $2,000 per vehicle, which is very cheap. But this also makes it very good political gift. So if anybody wants to you know, run for an election campaign in India, the typical way to start their campaign is to gift a bunch of these to poor people in that city. So if you are running in a small city, you'll gift like 50 of these to people and say, you know, you generated jobs, you, you are against pollution, you're also, you know, this is cheap enough to be given out in numbers because cars are expensive. So, so that is the reason of the popularity, but still, it works. And now, so this is the most important factor. If you look at it, the technology advantage is not really there. I mean, there is nothing much to be done on a technology side. You know, it's already there, it works. This is the piece which we have to get right. This is the most important factor in the whole equation. This is the business model, right? And if you know a little bit about markets like India and China, I think the biggest difference uh, with the Western markets is that you know, there's very little brand awareness or brand stickiness in the, in the Indian and Chinese markets. People would just go for, for the brand which is the cheapest, and that's typically what works. So because of that, the business model of this uh, solution becomes the key factor, right? How do you make sure that people are, you know, people are loyal to your brand? So one of the ways to do that is to break it down into a model where you're working not with, not as a company directly with consumers, but through entrepreneurs who are actually, you know, building small businesses on top of this platform. So essentially, you become a platform for small entrepreneurs to build small businesses. So how do we do that? So typically, we want small entrepreneurs to buy these rickshaws for about uh, uh, roughly about 10 rickshaws on an average. So you can buy five rickshaws, you can buy 20 rickshaws, but on an average, you want to buy 10 rickshaws. So essentially, uh, you invest about 20 to $30,000, buy 10 rickshaws, and hire 10 drivers, and you become a micro entrepreneur. And as a company, what we do is we provide them loans to do this through banks. And secondly, we give them a minimum guarantee of running. So this is, so 3,000 kilometers per month is the minimum guarantee that we give to the drivers to, that this is the minimum amount of the distance that they are going to run. We ensure this by giving them an app and sending them rides. So they will have, so a driver will have our application which will keep getting rides and they are assured that they're going to do 3,000 kilometers every month. And then we provide them seven rupees per kilometer. That's about 10 cents per kilometer. It's uh, fairly cheap compared to any other means of uh, transportation, even in India. And uh, we charge about 20% markup. So, so this is the business model. And the most important factor is that this is a very, very simple business model. But if you translate it to about uh, 30 million rides every day, which is about 5 million rickshaws, uh, in India at this moment. So this means that it is going to be about $10 billion GMV every year. So that's the advantage of working in a big market. So you try to take a very, very simple solution and scale it rather than have a complicated solution and not able to scale it. So and now, what is the advantage that Jugnu has which nobody else has, right? Why, why is this approach better? Because there is nothing technology-wise which we are doing, really. You know, we're taking a very simple technology. We're just trying to build it. So what do we have that nobody else has? So one is, in India, nobody's really attacking the problem. Right now, everybody is waiting and watching. 
and everybody feels that India is a tough market, so you need to have to see the first mover, whoever that is. So all the big companies like Uber, Ola, you know, Toyota, Maruti, they all want to basically see what works and then jump into the game. So they don't really want to, you know, take the first step. So that's the advantage we have. We have a huge market and no first mover. We can be the first mover. And second, the plan that we have does not require a lot of capital cost. We are actually trying to bring together entrepreneurs and banks to finance this system and make sure that everybody makes money in the process. So this becomes, rather than a top-down approach, a bottom-up approach. Right? It is a slow-moving process, but once it gets going, it's very easy to, to actually uh, scale because you know, it's driven by entrepreneurs. And if you want anything to scale fast, you, know, you just have to somehow attract entrepreneurs into doing that. And then we have captive audience. So we have about 5 million people who are already using our app. This is the gas auto rickshaws that we have. And uh, we want to just move those rickshaws to electric first. And the second step is to then move those, uh, uh, to start adding new rickshaws to the fleet. So 40,000 transactions which we are doing captive based on gas fleet, we move them to electric first, and then we start to increase. So in the next one year, our focus is to just move all our captive transactions onto the electric fleet. So essentially 40,000 daily transactions. And finally, because we have a fleet that is not just doing uh, not just doing rides of passengers but also doing deliveries we have a better advantage when it comes to efficiency right our fleets are busy for about 70% of the time compared to a typical fleet on the road which is busy for all uh, only about 30% of the time so the efficiency of the fleet that we have is almost double than a traditional you know rickshaw that you see in india and uh, so that's, the, that's where we are right now, and the status where we are at this moment. So we started this pilot about six months ago in one city. So we're doing about 2,000 rides on the model that I explained. So we, it's a profitable model, and we already have about 100 entrepreneurs enrolled with us who have their rickshaws, who manage the drivers, and we just focus on two things, making sure that they get enough business to make it viable. And the way do we do that is through the app and marketing on the app and keeping the costs low. So that's the stage right now where we are at. And the timeline is, so in the next one year, we want to replace all the existing transactions with electric transactions. That would be uh, by the end of this year. And after that, we want to grow to about 300 cities in India and by the way, there are 100 cities in India with a population of over a million people. So it's a very, very big market, right? Without any public transport access. So this is the opportunity that we are trying to capture. And finally, I would just end with a small story. So somebody asked me, you know, there is really no technology you are bringing to the table. So why don't you bring some, you know, do something as a company which is doing something with technology, right? Because being a technology company, everybody is almost obsessed with, you know, building some technology that makes a big company, right? So I said, you know, there are three things that really matter here. One is doing this, we save about 15 million kilograms of carbon dioxide being produced every single day. That's a big impact, right? Second, we provide about 5 million jobs. And that's, again, a very, very big impact, right? And finally, we are able to do such a big service to our country by reducing the deficit. So even if it is not very technology heavy, even if it is not very tech product, it's still something that is worth doing. And that is why we feel that Indian Tesla is not going to be a very nice looking car which competes with sports cars, but it's going to be a humble three-wheeler, almost a cycle with an electric motor into it. That is our vision for electric vehicles in India. Thank you very much.